emerging this year. You are, is he helping? Where is he at right now? What? I don't know. <laughs> is he? I thought he was back east. You're in Nauvoo, aren't you? Yeah, Nauvoo. He's in Nauvoo right now, so he graduated early from high school and is still with us in heart. Okay. I'm going to give you a little backstory of this very first song. It's a meditation song. And uh, we went to GA 2012, and it was in Arizona, and we went to uh, Camp, the uh, tent city, Sheriff Arpaio's uh, tent city, which was really intense. We did a candlelight vigil there. And before we left, uh, we were told that there would be protesters for the candlelight vigil, which is you know, a little scary because they can, have, um, they can have guns, basically. And so we were nervous for the kids and the kids were a little nervous, and we had a little pep talk about, okay, this is what we're gonna do to help keep you safe, everybody's gonna be okay. And Danica and Jesse, we were all waiting for the buses to take us to uh, Tent City, and Danica Carrillo and Jesse Kimball started singing um, this meditation song. Just spontaneously, they just started singing it, and then the whole crowd started singing it, and so it was hundreds and hundreds of people singing the song, and everybody's tension went down, and it was, a very powerful experience for them because they knew that they could create change and just by singing. So we joined everybody in this. Number 1009 in the teal hymn book, and please stay seated. We're going to start with the third verse just a few times and then we'll go to the first verse. Just meditate and listen as well, or you can join in. Volunteering five or more times since 
September. Youth who have a blue button have been very committed to helping our community. And there are three purple buttons which represent innovative ideas. Emily Smith, Emily, will you please raise your hand, lift your hand. Emily Smith has one for putting on a cosplay fashion show fundraiser, something that we've never done before, but we hope to do again. She may not want to, but we do. It was fun. <laughs> Um, also, after hearing of Leela Alcorn's tragic death, Emily was inspired to bring awareness and support to the LGBTQIA youth in the Salt Lake Valley. This led to a candlelight vigil on Leela's behalf held here at our church. The vigil brought people together throughout the Salt Lake Valley, building our wider community. It also led to a guest speaker coming to our class to talk about transgender issues. So thank you, Emily. Hunter Bowie, Hunter Wave has a purple button for an achievement that went unnoticed a couple of years ago. He has a video on YouTube called The Evolution of UU Dance, which you should all take time to look up. It's worth it. It's innovative and funny. His family should also be recognized for their efforts because they're in it, and I'm sure Tori helped in its production, so Tori, for sure, gets kudos. <laughs> Hunter also spent time revising the lyrics to a song that we'll be singing today in our service. He's so creative and enthusiastic, so thank you, Hunter. He was also the MC at the Cosplay Fashion Show, which he should have gotten an award just after that alone because it was hilarious. It was awesome. And then, um, uh oh, oh, I turned the page too soon. Here we go. Okay. And finally, Maggie Burns. Maggie, raise your hand. Maggie has a purple button for the helping develop a new curriculum which led to the senior high class becoming more engaged and having a lot of fun this year. We had more conversations and less teaching. We had coffee shop Sundays with games and time to hang out, a ton of community service projects, and we participated in many social action events because of her. So thank you, Maggie. And last but not least, anyone with a rainbow button is going to GA. So please talk to our youth during the reception and ask them about their buttons. Thank you for your time and let's begin. Welcome, I'm Grace Burns, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. I invite you to enjoy the chapel in the back of the sanctuary and note joys and concerns in the book there. If you have no ones, we have a nursery downstairs and after our service, I invite you all downstairs to enjoy hospitality and to greet one another. Finally, please note the announcements in your order of service with many ways to be engaged in this vibrant community. An important announcement. Today we hold our annual congregational meeting at 1230 after the service. There will be lunch for everyone and childcare is provided. At the luncheon, the Social Action Committee will be accepting donations for dessert items to support the Homeless Youth Resource Center. At the congregational meeting, we will vote, as we typically do every year, on new leadership and new budget. This year, we will also be voting on calling Reverend Patty to be our settled minister. We employ the democratic process in these important matters, and each member's vote is important. We need at least a 40% quorum of the membership for the vote to be valid. Members of the congregation take the final vote, but friends are welcome to attend and give input. Please plan to attend. <coughs> Come, come, whoever you are. You are welcome here, no matter your age, your size, the color of your eyes, your hair, your skin. You are welcome here, no matter whom you love, how you speak, or whatever your abilities. You are welcome here, whether you come with laughter in your heart or tears. You are welcome here, if you come here with an open mind, a loving heart, and willing hands. You are welcome here. Please stand as you're willing and able as Alex Young lights the chalice. Please join me in saying the words in your order of service. We light up this chalice for the warmth of love, for the light of truth, and for the energy of action. You may be seated. Thank you. 
Children's Story. Children's Story.
Jeremy opened the door, he seemed surprised. He stood on the other side of the screen door and looked at me, waiting for me to say something. I was nervous. Can you play? I asked. He looked confused. Um, I'll go ask my mom, he said. He came back with his shoes in his hand. His mom walked around the corner to say hello. You boys stay out of trouble, she said, smiling.
One way that we at South Valley support our community is to share our Sunday morning offerings. Today we will split the offering with The In Between, Utah's first hospice house for the homeless. Please note further information in your order of service on what this community partner is doing and how to be engaged with their work. Will you join me in saying the words printed in your order of service for our offering? We are this church. We are its hands, its heart, its voice. Together we share in the wealth of this community and sustain it with our gifts. Incredible. 
A memory that will share is my whole life. You should see what the teachers teach us. It's just a wonderful how much time they put in each hour to teach. To just teach us um, a lesson for whole life. Um, so my favorite part this year is just coming to this church and spending time with you guys. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alex Young. Um, I haven't been here for very long, so I haven't had a lot of time to participate. But I'm really excited to participate more next year. Um, so far, my favorite experience was a lesson that Sherry gave on changing the world. Uh, the songs and talks that she used were really inspirational and motivated me to make a change. Hi, my name is Grace Burns, and my favorite part about this year was teaching a class on gender roles because it helps show that you can raise awareness on issues no matter how old you are.
Hi, my name is Isabel Burns. Um, as you know, the theme of this year's youth service is community. Um, I think a big part of community is community service. So I thought I'd share a story. Um, uh, Rachel already said this, like kind of with her favorite part of the year. Didn't know that was gonna happen, but. Um, okay, so the youth were feeding the homeless downtown. Um, with the Baptist Church, and I got assigned to pass out condiments, like little packets of ketchup and mustard. Um, I was on this job with Rachel Kimball, and there, this lady came through the line, and she was about like 50 years old. Um, she had long brown hair, and it was curly, and it was like kind of ratty. Um, she had a beanie on, and a huge coat, and a little scarf. Um, she got to the condiments part of the line and Rachel told her she was beautiful. The lady instantly started smiling and blushing. She started crying and told us she never thought of herself as beautiful and no one had ever told her she was. We kept calling her beautiful and gorgeous and she said we made her day. After that, um, she kept getting in the line to hear compliments from us. <laughs> It was probably the best experience I've ever had with community service. It showed me that my actions and words can affect others, and it's not that hard to be nice. It took me and Rachel 30 seconds to make that woman's day. Um, I realized that our senior and junior high groups are truly amazing, and I've been blessed to be around such amazing people. Um, so thank senior high for the amazing memories this year. And uh, I'm super original, so I'm sorry, my, my story is also about that day. <laughs> um, okay, so this year I have done so many things to grow close with this group. We've done loads of stuff with each other. We went to a cabin retreat with each other. We helped pack lunches for the homeless youth in a, um, Monday menus, and we also went down to the homeless youth center and helped there. And pretty soon, we're all going to be going to General Assembly together in Portland, Oregon. So even though there's a lot of things I want to talk about, this is what I chose. So um, <coughs> we went downtown, and because I'm always pretty busy, Sunday is usually the day that I sleep in the latest. So getting up around even eight or nine is hard for me. But if it's for a good cause, I've been known to get my butt out of bed and go try to make a difference. So around 7, my mom wakes me up and she puts me in the car to take me downtown. And the first time we did this was in the fall, so it was freezing. So we got to get up early and then go downtown and freeze your butt off. Um, so when you get to the park, they have you wash your hands and put on these aprons and little uh, hats and stuff so you don't get your nastiness in the food. And um, then they tell you what your job is going to be for the day. And everyone's, once everyone is situated, then they have a prayer for just the volunteers. But before they start passing the food out, they have a prayer for everyone. And they bless all the homeless people and all the people who came down there. Um, and even though, like I said, I'm not a morning person, and it kills me inside to wake up before the sun has risen, <laughs> um, once you get down there and see the difference you're making in those people's lives just by bringing them just a little bit of food, it really makes a difference. And I definitely appreciate the service that I've been able to put forth this year. I appreciate the opportunity to become closer with this youth group that means so much to me, and also the people who facilitate us. So thank you. Hello, I'm Hunter Bobie. Um, I've had a lot of opportunities to build community this year, from going on retreats with my youth group to cons, or even service projects. However, I think that one of the most important communities I've gotten to become a part of is this one right here. There are several people that have really made a difference in helping me strengthen my place in South Valley. There are a lot more people that I would like to mention, give a story about how they've affected me, but I only have a few minutes. The youth leader in this congregation have had a very positive influence on me. So I can't really talk about becoming a part of this community without mentioning some of them. 
probably the most influential person to me this year is Christy. She's been a huge part of helping me more than more. She's been a, a huge part of helping me become more part of this community and really finding my place. Other leaders have had a big impact on me as well. For example, when I was in Sacred Travels, which was a while ago now, I specifically remember Trista Emmer being the DRE and directing Children's Chapel, passing around the little offering basket so I could put my 35 cents in I got from my mom. Now fast forward a few years and now we have a great DRE, Liz, who now has a history of leg injuries, including a barbed wire incident we've had with the retreat, and quite the reputation with us as a hen artist as well. Or when I first started going to the junior high group, and, I was, and both the senior and junior high classes were combined, I was terrified about being the youngest one in the class. That year probably wouldn't have been such a great experience for me if it hadn't been for Mac, my mentor during the Sacred Travels program. Not to mention all the help that I've received, not only from Mac, but from Sherry as well. All the way up to this summer where she's going to be my mentor and chaperone during GA. Granted, not everyone who has helped me has been a youth leader. For instance, Reverend Patty, even though she works with the youth quite a bit, she has helped me feel more comfortable and part of this community. She's even tried to get me to join the choir. <laughs> Other people, as well, have made a lasting impression on me. A great example would be Cynthia. Without her, I wouldn't get a chance to get all dressed up, show off a bad dance move or two, to know what Russ's costume is, and just really get to interact and get a bigger part of this community. Or even people like Colin, whom I started to get to know through coffee hour when he would talk to me about algebra. And now, he, Chris, and Eddie have been playing frisbee with me in some really soggy conditions. <laughs> Colin, has inspired my inspiration so Colin has inspired my confidence so much that he even has me thinking I can sing now. <laughs> South Valley members haven't just supported me inside the building, they've also taken time to support me in my life away from church. For example, when Drew Carrillo was, um, he was interning at my favorite radio station, he took time out of his day to give me a personal tour of the broadcasting studio and let me meet those local celebrity DJs. I even get to give a bad endorsement for Rock Creek Pizza. Other examples include Eddie inviting me to play football with his extended family on Sunday afternoons and Max stopping by to watch a sixth grade basketball game of mine. And those aren't real exciting. <laughs> I would like to let you know that I'm really grateful to be able to be part of this caring, loving community. And I know my mom is grateful too for having this church to help me shape who I am. I'm sure most of you have heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it has taken a whole church to raise me. Thank you.
was amazing to grow. It was amazing to grow up alongside all of, all of these kids, and I love you guys so much. We're family, <laughs> friends, and comrades. Before I end, sorry, I would like to thank the DREs that look over all of this youth and the, that grow into the adults that we aim to become. And thank everyone in this community that shaped me into the young and strong woman I am now. Thank you for being kind and caring as each of us find our truth and values in this beautiful world. All right, so my name is Maggie and I'm a member here at South Valley. I had no idea what to talk about. As many of you already know, I was born and raised in this church. My mom brought me when I was three, and I've been stuck here ever since. <laughs> I've always heard people in our congregation talking about their experiences in other religions, and for the most part, they would say how unwelcome they, were, they felt, or how suppressed they were within their religious communities, and how it took them a long time to find a welcoming community like SVUS. As a kid, I could never really grasp this concept. It took me a while to understand how strong South, the South Valley community is. So, quick story. A couple of months ago, I had to stay after school to do a biology lab that ended at about 5.30, and I had to be at the school again at about 6.45 so I could meet my friends for the school play. Because I live so far away, I wasn't gonna go home because then I would have like 15 minutes before I'd have to turn around and come back. And like, what's the last principles? Like save the earth or whatever, so couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that. So, um, but I also had to eat dinner, and all my friends were busy, so I couldn't go out to eat somewhere with them before the show. So at this point, my options were to eat at a restaurant alone, which I wasn't going to do, <laughs> or to get takeout and sit in the school parking lot and eat my dinner, which I also wasn't going to do because my peers would see me eating in my car alone and would judge me. <laughs> Typical high school. <laughs> so, but then I remembered that my school's like five minutes away from South Valley, so I got my takeout, drove here, and I, this is a true story, I ate my dinner right out there along that fence, like I parked and like sat and ate my dinner while I watched Netflix on my phone. <laughs> so once I had finished eating, I turned off my show and just sat in my car for a couple of minutes before leaving for the play. While I sat there, I thought about how many memories I have of this church from just the parking lot. The church cleanups that my family helped with when I was younger, the excitement before leaving on overnight trips, like to my first GA or to my grandma's cabin for the um, overnight things that people talk about. <laughs> the sad goodbyes that were said once we got back, singing Barum at the end of the district con a couple of winters ago, and even the pay raids, even though that didn't take place in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about how I felt like I was at home even though I was just sitting in my car. I even got Wi-Fi out there, which, I mean, that's nice. <laughs> so I didn't use my car that was cool. <laughs> I felt safe and cared for as if all of you were there with me, making sure I was okay. I could feel the, the welcoming, inclusive, loving energy of the community even though I was alone in the parking lot. I didn't realize how truly amazing it was at first, but when I got home, I told my dad about how sad it was that I had to sit in the church parking lot all alone, and that there were the fruit vendors were, sit, were selling out there, um, and that for a little bit, I was a little bit worried that they would come up and like ask me what I was doing, because I'm like a teenager just sitting in the parking lot and mysteriously leaving. So I, <laughs> I didn't want to be like confronted or anything. So, um, but then he told me that I had nothing to worry about, because if the vendors did confront me, all I would have to do is tell them that this is my church. I've been actively involved since I could walk, and my whole family has been completely dedicated to the religious, ed religious education program. I have been a powerful force within this community without even knowing it, and that's not something that most people can say. How could they repeat that? For the first time in 18 years, I have finally realized how strong the force of community can be and how important it is to be involved in such a loving, open one such as South Valley. I know I'm not the only one who's felt this energy, and I hope that you all feel the same way about this amazing community as I do.
Uh, and my preschoolers. So my preschoolers that are bridging, can you raise your hands? I've got Haven, Salem, Evelyn, and Nora. And now that you're on that side of the bridge with the sacred travelers, do you agree to continue to hold on to the preschoolers who are over here on the other side? <laughs> awesome. Say, we do. Ready? We do. All right. Now, I would like you all to sit down unless you are a fifth grader. If you're a fifth grader, come on over by me. Otherwise, the rest of you can go and sit with, oh, with your families. Go sit with your families. I'd like to invite our junior high youth. You guys can go back to your families, Gunner. Now I'd like to invite our junior high youth and teachers to join us over on this side of the bridge. joining our middle school group next year. So, middle school, do you agree to embrace and welcome and support our new middle schoolers, Autumn and Samir, next year? If you agree, say, we do. We do. All right, now will you all hold hands and come over to the bridge? You guys ready? You wanna head up on the bridge? Just remember that even though you're on that side, it goes both ways. And we'll still welcome you over in Sacred Travels, too. Thank you. Okay, now I need my eighth graders from the junior high to come over here. And the rest of you can go back to sit with your family. All right, I need some high schoolers to represent. <laughs> they are ready to catch you. <laughs> All right. So we, so we, so we have Anna and Sage and Isabel and Cade ready to move into our high school class. Do you, the high school class, agree to support? hold and protect and take care of our bridging eighth graders? If you agree, say we do. We do! Right. Join hands and let's go across the bridge. Okay, remember how, okay, but on 
on this side of the bridge, for these high school seniors, they're not just crossing to be go away from high school. They are just simply be, being recognized as being a part of our whole community. So I would like our whole community to figure out a way to be touching that side. So everyone hold hands and make sure that you're holding the hand of somebody whose hand is going over to that side of the bridge. Can you do that? It's going to be a little bit tricky. Very nice.
that you youth bring to our community. And we really, really hope that this is not a bridge out into the way yonder, that it's a bridge into even closer community with all of us. Aren't they wonderful?